Subpaisa, one of India's leading payment gateways, offers a single platform for payment collection to payouts. We are the only payment gateway that supports all types of payments, cards, net banking, UPI, wallets, and offline. In this video, we will learn to integrate the Subpesa payment gateway with the Java application using the Spring Boot framework. Before we begin, we must take the credentials from your account manager and save the credentials in your system. Open the Java standard integration document from the Subpesa website. Start the integration process. Below are the steps to be followed. Step 1. Initialize the Java code for the Subpesa Payment Gateway. We can start the Subpesa Payment Gateway integration. Open your project and go to the palm.xml file. Copy these two dependencies and save the file. After that, create the subservice class. This class initiates the Subpesa Payment Gateway requests and handles the responses in your Java application. This class is marked with the service annotation, signifying its role as a Spring service component. Moving forward, we encounter a series of private fields, each annotated with value. These annotations indicate that the values are injected from the application's configuration, specifically client code, transus surname, transus surname, transducer password, callback URL, authk, and authiv. These values play a crucial role in configuring the Subpesa payment service. For the merchant credentials, contact the Subpesa account manager. Now, let's delve into the methods defined within this class. The PG request method takes the spotlight first. Here, we witness the construction of a model and view, a crucial element for initiating a payment request. Moving on, we define details about the payer such as their name, email, and mobile number. Then we move to transaction details, generating a random client transaction ID, setting the transaction amount, and specifying the channel ID, whether it's for web as W or mobile as M. There's flexibility to include extra parameters. In our example, we use two parameters, class and role. This can be handy if you need to pass additional information related to your application or transaction up to 20 values. Now comes the interesting part. We construct a data string with all the details we gathered. We can pass the extra parameters as UDF1 to UDF20, coming to encrypting the payment request parameters. The encryptor class provides a straightforward interface with two main methods. First up, the encrypt method takes a key, an initialization vector, and the value to be encrypted. It returns the encrypted string, safeguarding your data from prying eyes. Now let's move on to the decrypt method. With a decryption key, initialization vector, and the encrypted string as inputs, this method effortlessly reverses the encryption process, revealing the original data securely. Now encrypt the string using the encryptor class. The result of this encryption process is stored in the variable spurl. This variable now holds our sensitive data in a secure, encrypted form. Coming to constructing and returning model and view, first, we need to create HTML file. In that file, we create a form that will submit the encrypted data to Subpise's URL. The form includes hidden input fields for the encrypted data, client code, and a submit button. For testing purposes, we set the form action to Subpace's stage URL. However, when deploying in a live environment, make sure to switch this to the production URL provided by Subpaisa. After that encrypted URL neatly encapsulated within a model and view, which is then returned, this model and view is enriched with the encrypted data and the client code, paving the way for a seamless transition between your application and the payment gateway. Now, let's shift our focus to the peak response method. This function handles the decryption of the payment gateway's response. The encrypted response is passed in, and through the magic of the encryptor class, it is decrypted. The decrypted text is unveiled and displayed, providing insights into the transaction. 
The decrypted text is further dissected into individual response data, granting us a closer look at the intricacies of the payment gateway's communication. Each piece of information is carefully extracted and presented for your scrutiny. Create the subcontroller class. This class is annotated with controller, indicating its role as a Spring MVC controller. Additionally, SAB service is injected into the controller using the auto-ordered annotation, facilitating dependency injection. This section defines a method annotated with get mapping initiate payment, indicating that it handles get requests at the specified endpoint. Within the method, PG request is invoked from subservice and the resulting model in view is printed to the console and returned. Here, the post mapping response annotation signifies that the get response method handles post requests at the specified endpoint. The method takes an encrypted response as a parameter processes it using PG response from subservice, prints the result to the console, and returns a response entity with a processed response and an odd top status of OK. Don't forget to mention the callback URL to get the response after payment is done. This is the entire flow to integrate the SubPesa payment gateway. Still have any queries, please go through the reference code, which is mentioned in document page number two. Step 2. Access the SubPesa checkout page. After initiating the payment request, SubPesa checkout page appears. Here, you can seamlessly select your preferred payment mode, enter the necessary payment details, and proceed to complete the payment. Once done, the system generates a response, providing you with key information, including the amount and payment status, Thank you. Visit subpesa.in to know more information.